to preface this, I want to say that last year I spent about 32 days in the woods either scouting, hunting, or fishing. The year before that, I spent about 22 days. This doesn't include my regular hunts and camping adventures, which in the past three years adds up to just over 100 days. I've been hunting since I was nine and have spent a lot of time outdoors in various different parts of the US and in Canada. I've seen and heard a lot of strange shit, but this takes the cake. I was in Kohutta in the North Georgia wilderness for seven days scouting for bears, wild hogs, and deer, prepping for a hunting trip later that year. I had hiked in about 10 miles and then went off the trail for another three or five miles. Basically, I was out in the middle of nowhere. Since I was alone, I was using a hammock that has a built-in bug net and I had a rain fly over it. I spent about three days halfway up a mountain just looking for a good place to hunt. I saw three or four good-sized bears, about ten hogs, and came across some good-sized deer. On the fourth day, I was going to head down to a small stream that I had marked on my GPS and then set up camp, restock on water, and prep for the two-day hike back. I could have gone faster, but I wanted to be able to look for any animal sign along the way. As I was approaching this small stream, I noticed a tent, which I was really excited to see. As I had been completely alone for a few days and it's always nice to run into another hiker because generally us wilderness folks are pretty down to earth. As I got closer to the tent, I noticed that there was a small pack on the ground just outside of it. I figured the person couldn't have been far from where the camp was so I set up my camp about 30 yards away and with about 4 hours of daylight left started cooking some dinner. Two hours later I was starting to wonder where this person was. Given that I was in the wilderness and it was a one plus day hike out, there wasn't much that I could do. But I did hike around the site, making a circle as I went out to look for any signs of struggle in case of a bear attack or maybe they had an injury. I got about a one fourth of a mile from the campsite, walking a circle, but I didn't find anything. Eventually night came around and no one showed. I started a fire in hopes that the person would be able to find where they set up and have some light. Fires burn really bright and are very easy to see from far away. After eating, searching, and hoping that the person was going to make it back, I called it a night. I had a small flask with me and took a couple sips of whiskey, jumped into my hammock with my pistol, and attempted to go to sleep. I sleep pretty hard, I mean really hard, regardless of where I am. It literally annoys my friends because I can always seem to fall asleep and stay asleep regardless of where in the world we are. But. This night was different. I felt like something was off, but I figured it was just me worrying about this person who, by all my accounts, was completely missing. So, for the first time in my life, I woke up to the sound of what I thought was footsteps, but not in the sense of footsteps on leaves, but what a heavy-footed person would make on an old wood floor. It was extremely loud. I got my gun, grabbed my headlamp stored in a small compartment up above me, and waited to see if it would stop. Right at that moment, it did. And that's when I saw something that scared the absolute shit out of me. On my rainfly, the gleam of a flashlight, faint but there, I shouted, Hello? And right when I did, it sounded like ten people suddenly running away from me in every direction. I dropped out of my hammock onto the ground, frantically turning on my headlamp and shining it all around me. But I didn't see anything. My heart was racing pretty bad, but I thought it might have just been the reflection of the moon on the rainfly. Yeah, that was it, and those footsteps running away from me was probably just armadillos or something, even though their eyes shine and they're pretty easy to spot. Problem was, there was no moon. I'd never seen an armadillo above 2,000 feet, not to say that they don't live up there, just I've never seen one. And for some reason, the campsite I set up by was gone. The fire had been put out by water. It was apparent because there was not a damn coal in the thing. I thought for sure it was about 4 a.m., but I had only been asleep for about an hour. At this point, I wanted to leave, but hiking out in the wilderness while it's dark is always a bad idea. So I grabbed my flask, took a swig of whiskey, removed my rainfly so I could see out of my hammock and around the area I was in, and tried my hardest to go back to sleep. I'm laying down when I saw some light hit the trees above me, and it was clear it was coming from downstream. 
I got out of my hammock and started yelling. Hey, do y'all need any help? No response. I saw whatever was putting out the light and it spun around and started heading down the stream really fast. At this point, my body had pumped more adrenaline than it had blood and I was exhausted from it all. I finally was able to fall asleep and woke up around 7 a.m. When I did, I noticed that my water filter I had left out was missing. It's a gravity filter and it hangs on a tree filtering water down into my main bladder that I put in my backpack. And my water bladder, which was sitting at the base of a tree, looked like it had been cut down the middle with a knife. They cut down my bear bag, which had food in it, and took some of it. The creepiest part of it all was that they went through my bag, which was under my hammock, while I was sleeping. I checked my bear bag before I went back to sleep the second time, and it was still there, hanging. And my bag under my hammock hadn't been touched. I packed all my shit and hightailed it out of there, keeping my pistol close to me and moving as fast as I could. I ended up making the hike back in just under 15 hours. I hiked the trail part in the night because I wasn't about to spend another night out there. I didn't see anyone on my hike out. There were no cars parked at the trailhead, and the DNR said that they had only seen my car there. Since then, I haven't gone out there without any friends. I reported all of this to the local DNR, but they looked at me like I was crazy. Maybe I am. I hike very frequently and was on a trail and about 8 miles from the nearest gravel road. It was just me and my dog. Just to note, I've hiked these trails frequently and have only seen other people during mushroom hunting season and only near where the parking patches are and this was in January. So it was freezing cold and there were no mushrooms. I'd been going at it for almost 2 hours when I stumbled upon a pile of bones. Large bones, bigger than human, maybe a cow, maybe buffalo, maybe horse. They were completely clean and sun bleached. No flesh, no fur. I find deer remains all the time, they always have fur on their legs. This means someone, or something cleaned them, or their old bones. The scary part is that they were neatly arranged into a pyramid shape, all leaning on each other like a teepee. I was just on this trail the week before and there had been no bones. There had also not been a giant dead animal and there wouldn't have been any rotting happening because it was 20 Fahrenheit. I stared at them for a while, then turned around and spotted more peculiarities. The tree behind me had several bones strung up and hung in the tree by the trail marks. They swayed in the wind and kinda clunked gently like morbid wind chimes. So this means it had to have been somebody and not some weird raccoons or something. I start to panic because does this mean that somebody's watching me? Am I being warned or stalked? I always go on a select few trails and this is one of my most frequented and never have I seen someone else out this far. The hairs on my neck stand up because I'm sure I'm in the crosshairs of some serial killer who's been stalking me. I walk with my headphones in, he could have followed me for weeks and I wouldn't have known. My dog freezes and points towards a different large tree 10 yards away. The hair of her scruff raises and she starts to growl and creep toward the tree. I'm panicking, I have nothing other than my hiking stick. My dog barks once. She's 40 pounds by the way, she's not an attack dog. And she starts sprinting towards the tree. I instinctively crouch down. She reaches the tree and a turkey takes off from the other side, gobbling as it flies away. I can still feel my pulse in my eyes as I watch it fly away. I sigh, pet my dog, and check to make sure I didn't shit myself. I snap a few pictures of the weird bones and make my way back. I still hike through there, and the bones are still there untouched. No way am I touching them. No idea where they came from, probably some weird old coot trying to scare people. It definitely worked on me. Tennessee has some real bumfucky people out in nature. I hiked all around while in school there, made some good memories with a girl in the enveloping nature. Tennessee has good roads to popular hiking sites and tons of mini trails branching off. Sometimes you need to know what to look for as far as trail markers go. 
because the interesting ones are always a good ways out. There's one spring waterfall that spills across a mossy granite wall towering over a shallow stream that empties into a decent sized pond. I went out there with a friend last time and we got separated on the way out. I have no fucking clue how this happened. We've each been hiking for over 10 years. I've gone over it a thousand times in my mind and it has to be this one ledge system. To get to the top of the fall, you need to take a longish detour that has a lot of old wooden railing and a three-way branching ledge system. Okay, so I've taken all three routes and ended up at the same spot. They take maybe three or four minutes to blast through and they're kind of like rocky corridors. I don't take the left one anymore because I'm 90% sure these big stains in the middle are blood. Don't want to know what happened there. It's really odd because the left path is by far the most inviting. Flowers bloom from the vines that are etched into the moss matted bedrock. Anyways, I'm 45 seconds ahead of the girl I mentioned earlier and I opt for the right path when I realize that I should tell her to avoid the left path. It's really hard to reverse given the sloping angle of the path and a few short drops that become narrow climbs. Fuck it, it's faster if I speed through and then yell down to her. I get out of the right corridor, swing around to where the middle path drops off, and I yell. No reply. She took left. Fuck. I run over and climb into the left corridor, thinking maybe she saw the stains and freaked out. It looks like someone got bludgeoned to death, to be fair. She's fucking gone. Ashley? Nothing. And that's what made my hair stand up. I literally heard nothing. No birds, no hum of the forest, not even wind. Just myself in the babbling water. I traced left all the way back and noted a few side passages if you miss a couple of the jumps. No bodies were in there or the middle. Good. I figure I may as well get to the top of the falls where I can get somewhat of an aerial view. I get there and Ashley is sitting there waiting for me. She says she took the left path with the trail guide. What? There are no trail guides. There are rangers, but she knows the difference. They wouldn't be in the rock labyrinth. This guy had a uniform on and a trail authority visor on. She knew what I was thinking based on my face and agreed that we should reverse course ASAP without us saying anything out loud. Man, it's a weird feeling when you know you're being watched. So we pretend like we're going back to the car real quick to get some more water and so I left some fish food in a little crevice like I always did and we left. She showed me this weird side passage that could not have existed a year ago. I walked all the way around. You had to crouch, but you could walk through the labyrinth if you kept left through. In hindsight, we should have taken another way. I think that he lives in those tunnels. She said that he kept trying to lead her in different directions, but she just followed the light and saw him standing in the tunnel as she walked the rest of the trip to the top. That means that he was there when I was looking for her. That means that she followed him before seeing the blood splatters all over the floor and walls. And that's not even the totally fucked part. The fucking fish food was on the hood of my car. Her water bottle was gone too. She had it carabinered to her pack so he must have snuck up and taken it at some point. We hiked fast too. We never went back and I don't think we ever will.